Dear brothers and sisters, it's good that the pandemic distanced us socially, yet it, it couldn't distance our pontiff, His Holiness, Catholicos Aram I of the Great House of Cilicia from his worldwide flag. Therefore, it's my privilege to invite His Holiness, Catholicos Aram I in order to address our August Assembly. Anon hor ye bort vo ye bo kuin serpo amen I'll greet you all in the spirit of Christian love and fatherly blessing. And I pray to Almighty God to enrich your life and service with his uh, heavenly grace and a spiritual joy. Once again, you are gathered together, and this time online, as National Representative Assembly to focus your attention, your discussion and deliberation, and in fact, evaluation on the work of the prelacy of the last period. I have with me the reports of the prelacy. And in fact, it displays the multiple spheres and dimensions of the activities of the prelacy. And uh, it clearly indicates that in spite of tremendous difficulties uh, of different nature and the scope, prelacy under the leadership of Serpazan with religious and lay councils Thanks to God, they have made significant achievements. And therefore, I believe that they all deserve my, and in fact, you, warm thanks and deep appreciation. We are living in unusual times. The whole humanity is still under the constant and fearful threat of the coronavirus pandemic. And it seems that the challenges concerns, problems generated by this pandemic will be around us for the foreseeable future. Therefore, in the face of this uh, critical situation, we have to be realistic in planning and organizing of the activities 
and the agenda priorities of the prelacy as well as of our parishes. With this concept in mind, and in this perspective, I would like to share with you a few considerations. First, I went carefully through this report of the prelacy, and I'm sure you all have before you. On page 15, there is a sentence uh, which captured my attention. And I quote, Sir Pazan tried and to find new ways to bring our church to the community. To bring the church to the community. I would like to continue the sentence uh, and add and bring the community to the church. These are the two dimensions, namely taking the church to the people and bringing the people to the church. Two interconnected and complementary dimensions of the church's pastoral and missionary action. This is the core of being church. This is the, the essential task of our prelacy and the, our parishes. In fact, the church acquires its true nature, the credibility and the relevance of its vocation when it becomes a living reality in the life of our communities, when the community itself is transformed to a church. My second point is that uh, as I have uh, repeatedly reminded our clergy and our people that the church is not the building, is not the prelacy. The church is a local reality which expresses itself through the community of faith. Therefore, the church is there on the local parish level. Let's remind ourselves what Jesus, our Lord, said If a few people gather together in my name, I am there. That is the church. There is the church, the community of faith. Therefore, the parish should continue to be under the immediate focus of the agenda and activities of the prelacy. All our initiatives, activities, functions, programs, projects should be driven from and sustained by this very reality, the church being a local reality. My third point is uh, related to the new times that we are living with. As I said, this is unusual and in fact abnormal times, the crucial times, we may describe with different words, names, the time that we are in today globally. Humanity is exposed directly and constantly to the threat of coronavirus pandemic. Therefore, in view of this situation, we have to reorganize our activities, our agendas accordingly. The world will not be the same after pandemic. We are going to 
experience different kinds of situations. Our lifestyles, our perceptions, our convictions, our methodologies will be changed on personal, family, community, organizational, national, global levels. Therefore, we must organize our programs. We must set our programmatic priorities accordingly, as I said. My fourth point is related to youth and women. I warmly welcome the prelacy is a continuous concern in engaging women and youth in the total life of our church and community. This is not just a program or project or activities. This should remain an essential and permanent dimension of the church's outreach. I am against all sorts of mentalities, perceptions, methodologies, or approaches that try to set demarcation lines between various categories or age groups in our community. This is not acceptable. All of us, young and old, men and women, belong to our community. We are all integral and inseparable parts of our church and community. Therefore, it is my expectation that the prelacy, the serpassan, the councils, our parish authorities provide all kinds of facilities, full support and encouragement to women and youth to take active parts in the life and mission of the church. And furthermore, it is my expectation that they assume a key position, leadership positions in the life of our church and community. And finally, I am very happy that Sir Pazan has chosen as the theme of this meeting, learning and growing together. This is very close to my heart. I remember years ago, as moderator of the World Council of Churches, I gave a lecture on this very theme. Of course, I'm not going to repeat my lecture for you, but let me underscore a few points within this framework. Learning, it's an endless process. It should become, in fact, endless process in the life of a person or an organization or a community. We need to engage ourselves in this enriching, creative, dynamic process. We should learn by reading books. We should learn by looking at the wonderful creation of God. We should learn in engaging in interaction with our neighbors, with friends, with the others. Whatever we do, in our life should become a source of learning. Even we have to learn the humanity from the coronavirus pandemic. There are lots of lessons that we have to learn from this pandemic. Learning promotes growing together. There is no real growing without learning. And therefore, it is my expectation that the prelacy, 
the parishes, our committees, our people engage themselves in this uh, enriching process of growing together by learning. And I would like to underscore the word together. We need to deepen the sense of togetherness. We are one nation. We are one people. We are one community. We are one church. That sense of togetherness brings us together. We need to strengthen this bond that brings us together as one church and one community. I pray the Almighty God to take this evil from the world and fill our life, the life of our church, the life of our community and all members of our communities with his heavenly joy. May God bless you all. On behalf of our delegates, Your Holiness, we thank you wholeheartedly and we indeed thank for the guidance throughout all this pandemic turmoil that from pragmatic point of view, you always led us with wisdom. You allowed us to do in liturgical life changes, which were very unprecedented for the welfare of our parishioners, our believers, and be sure, Your Holiness, that our faithfulness is as deep as the oceans, and we are always supportive to all of your programs, your plans, and your visions. May God grant you long life, and may your staff of the pontifical staff be evergreen, leading us from life to life. Thank you, Your Holiness.